while back, I uploaded a central air troubleshooting video which explains in great detail how the system works and how to troubleshoot a system that's not cooling. That video has now become very popular on YouTube. Understanding that many people know very little, if anything, about AC systems, I decided to make this video to show viewers a very simple way to test how well their AC system is cooling, as well as explain reasons why their AC system may not be cooling as well as it should. This video pertains to central AC systems with ducts as well as split systems without ducts. The main purpose of this video is to educate viewers so in the event they need to call an AC technician for service, they'll know what to expect and not be ripped off by a dishonest company that thinks they can pull a fast one on you because you know very little or anything about AC systems. I highly suggest you watch my popular central AC system repair video after watching this video. If you enjoy money saving videos like this one, then be sure to support my channel by sharing my videos with others and or making a small donation using the PayPal link provided in the video description area. Now the simplest thing that you can do to get a very good gauge of how well your AC system is working is to take temperature readings on the air entering the system. In this case, it's right down here at the bottom of the screen. This is called a return. It's returning the air to the air handler where the evaporator is going to absorb the heat from the air and return it to the room using the ductwork and the registers. You're going to need a simple way to measure the temperature. You can use a dial type thermometer like you see right here or you can use a digital one. You should be able to pick one of these up at your local hardware store or Harbor Freight. If you can't find one, a link has been placed in the video description area where you can pick one up at a great price. The first thing you're going to do is set your system to AC cool and you're going to lower the temperature down low enough that it's not going to click off during the test. The next step is to take the temperature probe, insert it into your filter, and you're going to leave it there for about three minutes, and then you're going to take a look at the reading of the air entering the system. You're then going to record that reading, and then we're going to take a temperature reading at the register. When you measure the temperature of the air coming out of the register or vent, you want to choose one that's fairly close to the air handler. After two or three minutes, we're going to write down this temperature and then we're going to compare the temperature that's going into the unit to the temperature of the air exiting the unit. Okay, over here are the temperature readings for my unit. Temperature in at the return is 85 degrees. Temperature out, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And the difference is 19 degrees. Over here, I show what's acceptable and what's not. So if you have between 18 and 20 degree difference in temperature, system is considered good, especially if it's 19 or 20, which is right around where a new, highly efficient AC system should be. If you have 16 to 17 degree differential, that's considered borderline. Still acceptable, but it is borderline. And if you only have 14 to 15 degrees, or even less than that, your system is definitely going to require service. If you have a system that's only 14, 15 degree differential, What's going to happen when it gets very hot outside, the system is going to run constantly. You're going to have a very high electric bill, and the only time it will usually click off is at night when the sun goes down. Most common cause for a system that's around 14 to 15 or less with a differential is going to be a low refrigerant charge. In a minute, I'll show you what to look for outside. Or a system that's just very old and has lost efficiency due to the coils becoming very old and very dirty. Keep in mind, if you have an air handler that's suspended in an attic, what can happen, you may have these readings skewed greatly if there's an opening in the ductwork between the air handler in the attic and the return on the ceiling or the wall. So you can actually measure 85 degrees entering the return, but in the attic, there's a little break between the return and the air handler, allowing very hot air from inside the attic to be sucked into the air conditioned system. So even though you're measuring 85, it may actually be 90 or 95 going into the unit, throwing off this reading. So it's always a great idea to take a look at the ductwork on your entire system, but especially on the return line. Also, don't forget to keep an eye on your air filter. If you see it getting dirty, be sure to replace it. Okay, let's go outside. I would like to show you a couple of things. 
if the unit is not running and there is power to the unit, the fuses are not blown or the circuit breaker is not tripped, then you're definitely going to want to refer to my other video. A link has been placed in the video description area and you'll also see a link to that video at the end of this video. If you have an older condensing unit, sometimes what happens all around the outside of the unit where the air is drawn in past the cooling fins, you can accumulate grass clippings and all kinds of dust that prevents this unit from cooling from working properly. So what you can do is you can actually disconnect power to the unit, unscrew the screws all around the top, and once you do that, this whole piece will be able to lift up and you can tilt it up and out of the way to the side. And then you can go inside using a garden hose very carefully. You do not want to damage any of the fins with the jet from a hose. You want to use the correct spray pattern, like a shower pattern or a misting pattern. You want to clean all those coils to wash away the dirt that accumulated. You can also use a coil cleaner. It's a spray that you can pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot. Spray down all the coils, allow it to sit, and then rinse. By doing that, you're going to increase the efficiency of this unit. If the system only has a 14 to 15 degree differential, by cleaning the coils, you could probably gain an extra degree or two, but usually when the system's that low, 14 or 15, and the coils are in pretty good shape, your system would be low on refrigerant. So if that happens, you know when you call up the service person, everything is working fine, you just need to have some refrigerant put into the system, and they're more than likely going to tell you there's a leak to keep an eye on. If the gas does leak out in a short period of time, you're going to have to find that leak. And right over here, you can see the openings around the outside of the unit that go all the way around. And this is the area where you would see a lot of grass clippings and dirt accumulate. So when you go on the inside of the unit, you can jet the water from the inside out, clearing away all that debris. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.